guys, welcome to Megan the Best of It. Today we are so excited to do our first video on our awesome camper van. We've been working super hard on it and today we're going to talk about the floor and the bed frame that we've been building. So the first thing we had to do was to remove the old floor. There was kind of a uh, like manufactured floor or something like that. It was just like a sheet of plastic with some like underlayment or something on it. Um, yeah, it was like super dirty underneath, so we really had to rip it up and mop it down. I thought about pressure washing, but I was told not to do that because it could cause rust on the inside of the car. So a mop was good. We were able to wipe it down and then dry it off afterwards. And then after that, uh, we took some uh, liquid nails and went along the, uh, the ridges at the bottom of the van and uh, placed these uh, these one by twos as furring strips all along uh, the floor of the van where we wanted the floor. Initially, I didn't put enough in, so the footage you have actually, it's I spaced it out too wide. It's uh, not what the floor ultimately ended up being. I ended up putting more in, especially because, and I didn't know this at the time, that there was a difference between OSB and plywood, and so I ended up using uh, OSB for the floor, which I deeply regret. Yeah, the biggest issue too is that it makes it really thick, and we have a medium roof fan, as you can yeah. probably tell. So it made it a little bit taller than we were anticipating. <laughs> right. I think, I think in the future, like if, if the time ever comes, I've kind of built the rest of this with the idea that I could tear out the floor again. If we do end up redoing the floor at some point, I'll probably just put plywood directly on some Thinsulate on the, uh, on the floor of the van immediately. That would give me some height uh, back into the van. And it would just be more stable, less squeaky, that kind of thing. As it is, this seems to function pretty well so far. This floor does work, like Isaac says. It's yeah, perfect. It's functional. It, it's pretty solid, actually. I'm very impressed with it. He did a great job on it. Remember, it's not stupid if it works. <laughs> the next thing that we did was we took rigid foam board insulation and put it in between the furring strips and then used uh, aluminum foil tape to secure it to the uh, furring strips. That way it created uh, hopefully a fairly good insulation base beneath us. I'm told that's the least important place to insulate, although there are huge insulation wars all over the internet about this. If you know something better, put it in the comments. I cut the plywood into the shape to fit the van floor. That was probably the most difficult part because the van has so many irregular shapes. Uh, in fact, that's been the most difficult part of this entire build is how many irregular shapes there are in the van. That's just the Ford Transit, so just so you know. Yeah. They are kind of oddly shaped. I'm told the Promasters are a little easier to build with. But if it breaks down, you're going to have a harder time finding those parts is what we heard. Whereas if the Transit breaks down, we can get it fixed. So yeah. things to consider when doing Probably your own Probably partially depending on where you are in the world. Cutting the floor and placing that. Initially, we used a nail gun. This was a bad idea. Don't do a nail do gun. Do Don't it. use it. I ended up prying up the floor and removing those because it because I needed to add in the additional furring strips in order to make the floor more stable because it was bouncing too much. Uh, again, another reason not to use OSB either. I know some of you are probably thinking, why didn't you just replace it with plywood? Mainly because money. We're poor. So I had to pry it up and then uh, secured it with some screws later on and those are much, much better. Makes it so I can remove it more easily. It's wonderful. I believe I used wood screws to secure the floor down the second time. We haven't totally finished the floor yet. We still need to put down some vinyl to make it look really nice. Since we ended up doing some darker walls as you might be seeing now, I am probably going to do more of a lighter floor to contrast. We're thinking about getting some vinyl and just sticking that on there. It'll be more waterproof, it'll be easier to clean. So that will be the better option for our floor just to finish it off. And we'll show that in another video. Next, we wanna talk about the bed and building the bed frame. It's clearly very sturdy because it's been holding our weight this entire video so far. Yeah, so I, I learned this one just from perusing YouTube. I'd seen them do uh, the IKEA hack, I think is what they're calling it, where it's you take these Scorva beams, uh, they're middle frame bed beams um, that are intended for bed frames, and you get these kind of, uh, these brackets that correspond with them. And you just, it, what I did was I uh, drilled some holes into the van, uh, added some uh, riv nuts, and then uh, attached the brackets that way, and then just put the beams directly into those brackets. Uh, we have three of them, and they are very, very strong. I highly recommend this. In order to save some space, we did make our bed frame a little bit smaller. It's probably more of a full-size mattress for us, 
but we kind of tend to stay in our little spaces when we sleep. We don't really roll around a whole lot, so we think it will be good enough for our needs. It's good enough for us. Yeah, we've tried laying down a few times, but the best thing about these beams is that you can make it as big or as thin as you want. Just remember in a van when you're kind of doing tiny living, you'll probably want a tinier bed. I think the most difficult part about this was that it was very, very hard to make sure all of the beams were even. We took some one by threes and then we took some self-drilling screws and just drilled them right into the into the score of the beams. It does make our bed very much fixed in place. You know, we're not gonna be able to adjust it. I know some people do sliding bed, things like that. We're not doing anything like that. We're not that fancy. We're gonna keep it very simple and very uh, economical. We really wanted a raised bed, so something we could put storage in from the back. So that's part of the reason we did the Scorva beams is it gives us some lift. We don't have to have anything supporting the bed in the middle or anything like that. We're not 100% sure what we're gonna do for the mattress yet, but if you guys have any ideas of what we could do, we were thinking about just trying to find a full-size memory foam mattress that would probably roughly fit. Yeah, we love your guys' help and support and ideas in this. Here's the best thing about this though. I'm looking at this, we have no construction experience. Some of you may be watching this and go, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> But we still managed to do this. So this is something we never thought that we would be able to do. And so my advice to you guys, if you want to build a camper van, just go for it. Just do it. Do your research. Try to be smart. Do the best you can. But it is so possible. You can do it. Anybody can do this. You just have to have the resources and be willing to sit down and learn what you can. And like Isaac said, we're doing a very basic build. We're not going to do any crazy wiring or anything like that. But it will be perfect for our needs and should fit our family just fine. Yeah. We're not fancy people. We're not fancy. We don't care. Low maintenance. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to see how this band build goes, if you want to see the final result. We are also excited to see the final results, so join us in that adventure. You can also follow us to learn some cool survival or bushcraft skills. We do travel videos. We do all kinds of fun stuff. If that sounds great to you, we'd love to see you back on our channel.